Okay, welcome to this informational webcast on IFS Application Management Services. My name is Bob Corgan. I'm the Vice President of the Establish Account Team, and I'll be going through this presentation today. So let's talk a little bit about traditional services engagements that most of our customers has experienced. Um, typically, there was a point where you evaluated and selected the solution, like IFS Applications. Uh, then you went through an implementation phase to go live on the IFS applications version that you're on. There was a stabilization period that went into effect. And then typically you went to a time material services as needed type of uh, service engagement model. So over the last um, year, and in particular since the uh, change to some of the pandemic related um, activities. You know, customers in the survey have asked for more timely access to experts. Um, it's critical to the success of the implementation. Predictability is important, including the response time of the experts, the amount of time it takes to resolve uh, the request and the cost for the request. Uh, there was a make the resources available outside of just in, in an active implementation or an active upgrade um, process. Uh, the business requires contractual uptime service level agreements for the application solution and wants IFS to offer those. Uh, IFS needs to provide more best practices and true business engagement with our customers. IFS needs to be more flexible with our customers and greater choice when deciding who will prime a project and um, how IFS engages when it is led either as um, a customer-led project where you have um, the skills in your own team or if you're working through uh, one of IFS's partners to lead the project. So to meet these requirements, IFS has uh, restructured some of our support and service offerings. And I'll just kind of go through them um, from the uh, bottom. So IFS Gold Support uh, was introduced with Applications 9 and um, is the basic support level that IFS provides that gives you updates to the product, software fixes, as well as right to new version. Uh, you can enhance that with Platinum. Uh, Platinum will automatically add or in addition adds 24 by 7 uh, coverage as well as um, guaranteed service level agreements and a customer care advocate. And then we introduced IFS Community. So IFS Community uh, replaced OpenIFS as our peer-to-peer um, -peer capability that is open to all customers, all IFS employees, and all of our partner employees. Uh, and it is available um, uh, publicly facing. Uh, in addition to that, we have added a new level of services, which is what we're going to focus on today, which is the application management services. And this provides long-term IFS involvement with defined business outcomes to help you optimize your solution. You know, actually providing application management services to our customers, you know, whether you're in the IFS cloud or not in the IFS cloud, no matter how you're deployed um, to be able to get those services. And then part of our whole life cycle engagement model, um, what we call the success and select model, uh, success is really to look at, you know, the entire life cycle of your application, you know, assess the business value that was expected, and then be able to do, you know, full-blown um, assurance on that business value, but that'll be covered in a, a different webcast. So what is application management services? It is access to IFS experts, you know, foremost and first. It provides our customers that don't necessarily have all of the different skills and competencies, you know, to really effectively manage the IFS application. You don't have to have all of the competencies. Maybe you have some system administration, you know, database administrator, systems analyst, um, business analyst, but this grants you access to IFS experts. It does provide a single point of contact. So uh, you'll see how the application management services helps to triage and provide that first level of uh, support to our customers uh, to go through and completely track any cases or tickets that come up related to your uh, usage of IFS applications. 
And the other um, important factor is to make sure that it is an agreed pricing model. So we have decided to make this the most cost effective model. We're using a subscription pricing method, uh, which is a three or a five year contract framework. And then it is based on the number of cases or tickets that you need to uh, utilize and that can be ramped up and down. You'll see that as we uh, go through the presentation and the level of the service level agreements um, that are required. So let's dive into it a little bit more. So you have uh, your various IFS systems and you have a lot of users, end users. Some are you know, really happy, some are neutral, some are sad um, because they're gonna raise that first line service ticket needing help. And many of our customers, you have to take those first line service agreements in. But what EMS allows you to do is get those into your first line help desk and then start to have IFS do the actual triage of those particular uh, tickets that are raised. We do that by going through this uh, hierarchy, starting with the IFS Competency Center. And the Competency Center is what validates the issue. If the issue can be you know, solved simply by sharing documentation, some basic advice, you know, it's dealt with immediately in the competency center. And you know, <clears throat> the next step is if it can't be, uh, it can be advanced to what's called the application management services, operational services. This is the team of individuals that perform installations, system administrative task, system configuration task, data management task, and you know, then it can move even further on to what we call expert services. And these um, IFS will advise on how to use the application, um, the various functions, the tools that are available. They'll assist in test and test protocols, and they'll perform you know, proactive technical analysis and recommend various optimizations to your application. If you look at the left, on the left, I mean, many of our customers have some of these skills, but maybe not all of the skills that they really need to um, manage the across the entire application. And increasingly, there is a need for that end-to-end -end service with that front-end built-in triage. Uh, and in a single commercial model and a single line of accountability to make sure that everything that comes in gets uh, accommodated and resolved in a timely fashion. Um, so we've developed the application management services uh, to be cost effective and built around these three or five year agreements. And we'll uh, go through a little bit more detail about that. And then if you have additional work packages that are needed, those can be priced separately. Those could include um, you know, much more involved things that are not covered by the operational and expert services. And we'll go through some more examples of those. So a little bit about what actually is included. So if you look at the competency center, they're doing the end user support and potentially answering questions related to customization advice. Uh, they'll do the issue recreation, the retesting after a delivery or a fix or update has been delivered, uh, basic functional advice on the application, inform uh, about any new legal requirements that might be coming into the market and how to meet those with IFS, uh, basic configuration advice and analysis, and we'll provide monthly statistics of, of usage. And then it will also then provide a handover depending upon you know, what you have for various services from IFS. Obviously the IFS support teams that deliver gold and platinum support. Uh, if you are in an IFS managed cloud environment, the IFS cloud team, uh, or then it could be handed over directly to the operational or expert teams within the application management services group. So if we look a little bit about the operational services, they are uh, able to deliver system administrative services. So they can do installations, they can do uh, user administration, as well as systems operation and monitoring, database backups and monitoring, advice on using various tools throughout IFS. Uh, they also will do security and profile uh, support for you. They will develop and um, assist in configuring lobbies for you. They will uh, write and deliver reports. Uh, as well as custom objects. So if you don't have someone that, you know, is competent in maybe writing a custom event or maybe a custom field, a custom logical unit, 
Uh, all of those things can be delivered by the operational services team within AMS, as well as they will write interfaces to you know, external systems uh, that you may have to have uh, written using the IFS RESTful APIs or um, in the older versions in 9, um, IFS Connect. They also offer data management services, so data repair, uh, data archiving, data migrations, as well as um, data maintenance. So those are additional services that are offered as part of the uh, portfolio that is delivered by the AMS operational services team. Then we move to the expert services, and this is where uh, you may encounter more of your traditional uh, types of uh, solution consultants, um, business analysts, where they're doing functional advice. You know, how do I do this in IFS? Uh, and then even moving all the way to solution. You know, how do I go about implementing, you know, fixed assets? Or how do I uh, invoke lease accounting in, in, in app IFS applications? Uh, solution enablement and then testing services to also make sure that you have that ability to do, you know, detailed uh, testing. Uh, tool enablement, they'll do the installations of the various tools, they'll uh, teach and configure the system administration and configuration tools, uh, the migration tool, uh, how to go about configuring it and using it, as well as a scope tool and training tool enablement, and we'll go through a little bit more of this in a minute. Uh, they also offer some proactive audit services around middleware server, the analysis and optimization of your middleware. Uh, your database analysis and optimization related to Oracle, and then your infrastructure sizing. So those are what are included in the expert services. And then additional packages that can be you know, configured depending upon uh, specific requirements that are outside of what's included in the AMS um, subscription. So just dig down a little bit some of the things that we've heard from uh, customers. You know, they want the uh, competent Competency Center to provide guidance on the effective use of the IFS solution based on predefined customer and IFS documented processes. They're answering questions related to functional behavior uh, in line with the documentation, clarify uh, uh, how the documentation um, should be uh, interpreted where it's needed provide information on the IFS release plans of our standard applications and the solutions for managing the new local um, legal requirements. And for all cases, you know, where a task uh, requires just a simple execution, that's done in the uh, competency center. And then, as I said, they turn them over. And if you look at the occupational services, you know, on the right-hand side, advice and assist in the usage of tools uh, to help you or they will do it uh, for you, the administra administrate, monitor, and operate, you know, your IFS applications, your middleware servers, and your Oracle database servers. Uh, they will update and administer users. They will update and set up permission sets and roles. Uh, they will create or update lobbies or lobby elements uh, to your needs. They will create or adjust custom menus, custom events, custom fields, custom logical units, custom tabs, custom pages, custom enumerations, information cards, and the application configuration packages to be able to move configurations between uh, systems. They will develop or adjust any quick reports, information sources, or IALs that are needed. They will adjust uh, enterprise application search configurations, object connection setups. They'll manage the languages and translations uh, for your application. They will assist to repair and restore customer data through scripts or other measures um, that we can find that are appropriate to get the data restored. And then if we move over to the export expert services, you know, this is the um, group, you know, then these can be, you know, some of the people that you've worked with, you know, on your implementation, on advice, on capabilities and usage of the application functions, including included in the solution, advice on the usage of functions to execute a business process, um, planned enablement sessions in the application solution for different processes, uh, run test process scenarios and analyze any errors or verify the solution after any changes to, you know, data configuration or other setups. 
uh, training for the tools for creating and updating the application reports and interfaces, and then training on Click Learn and Scope Tool um, if you have those licensed also. And then, as I said, there are additional um, services that can be uh, added on under a fixed price type of a uh, configuration, uh, but they are separate based on the actual needs of uh, your um, system. So if we take a look at, you know, the traditional consulting model, you know, you had access to experts that were local to you. Um, but typically, you know, this limited the number of people that were available based on, you know, the specific region that you're in. Uh, often the experts may have some experience with your system. Uh, however, you know, it was very difficult to get a committed time from the experts because they're constantly, you know, working on other new implementations or other upgrades. Uh, and, you know, you couldn't have a timely um, commitment to respond. Uh, it was a pay-as-you-go model. However, you know, that led to lead times for the time from when you requested the actual service until it was actually delivered. Uh, changes with business needs, meaning, you know, depending on if you're doing a acquisition, a merger, a rollout of a new uh, business process, like you want to start doing field service or you want to start um, utilizing Microsoft uh, or using IFS projects, uh, you know, those would be reactive where, you know, it was hard to find exactly the resource that you needed. Um, so, you know, that was one of the problems. Uh, you did have an established relationship typically with your local team that does not necessarily go away with AMS, um, but it did provide, you know, a lack of proactive guidance on resources as work is, you know, discreet and intermittent. Um, so you had different people always that you were uh, interacting with. And each service request needed a separate quote and a statement of work. And, of course, that creates some unpredictability in what the cost of service is going to be to you. So <clears throat> what we have uh, rolled out is IFS Application Management Services. And, you know, over the last six months, you know, worldwide, we have, you know, proven the ability to deliver services uh, remotely at all levels um, based on, you know, some of the changes that have happened from the pandemic. And we continue to leverage those uh, into the application management services. So the services are delivered. You know, the customer user has an issue and needs support. Uh, that ticket can be logged in your own uh, tracking tool, and that can be interfaced into the IFS applications um, tracking system or the IFS uh, tracking system. Um, we do assign a service delivery manager. That service delivery manager becomes the single point of contact for any type of service delivery escalation, as well as they are responsible for all of the proactive management of the cases that you have and the tickets uh, that you use. The IFS Competency Center, uh, you know, validates the issues. If the issue can be resolved, they take care of it. Otherwise, they hand it over to the appropriate resources. Uh, and there's continuous feedback between the service delivery manager um, and your company as to exactly, you know, how you're using the tickets that you have, how well the support is being delivered, and if there's changes that need to be uh, made to, you know, refine it. So EMS provides a way for IFS to provide expertise to our customers from very small reactive agreements that provide staff augmentation, you know, for existing operational functions as needed, all the way to full-blown um, outsource operations to IFS. Uh, and, of course, we can handle everything in between. Uh, and it's based on, you know, how many tickets or cases at each level um, you actually subscribe to, and of course, then you can mix and match as time goes on. So the EMS team, uh, the competency center is responsible for fielding the cases, qualify requirements and processes, and progress the updates. The service delivery manager is responsible for monitoring all of the consumption, recommend any usage of your spare capacity that you might have uh, to optimize your uh, solution. And uh, the experts that are involved are going to conduct those regular operational activities uh, to make sure that anything you need in that expert area is delivered effectively. 
There is, of course, an onboarding process. This takes about two months, about eight weeks. So once you enter into a, um, an EMS agreement with IFS, there's onboarding workshops that take place uh, with the service delivery manager and the application management teams. Uh, they build a quarterly consumption plan as well as a rolling two-month proactive service plan. So you always have an idea of what's coming um, you know, with a, a forward-looking two-month rolling plan as to you know, what's going to be delivered. Uh, they build test cases and stress test the communication channel. Uh, they build the AMS team and allocate the capacity to make sure that they can support your needs uh, ahead of time. Uh, there is a monthly review. Of course, then there's a handover uh, to make sure that everything is being um, handled correctly. And then, you know, all of the compliance documentation practices, process, and tools are put in place and compliant after that uh, two-month onboarding period. So one of the questions is, you know, how is it priced? So it's priced based on the... Uh, number of cases or tickets, and those are, you know, um, tickets that are required for the service desk, the number of cases that will be uh, needed in the operational and expert service area. Uh, it will define a clear scope and skill set of who is going to deliver uh, those services, as well as, you know, there will be the optional prepaid work packages if they're uh, needed. And then monthly totals for the three-year agreement. Um, so it's a, it's a three-year agreement as a minimal term, um, but it's on a monthly, month-by-month -month total as to what exactly you're looking for related to the tickets. Um, some of the benefits are you have uh, contractual service level agreements for response time. You have an annual volume assessment um, to, you know, really kind of true up uh, where you are with the mix of uh, tickets that you have. Uh, it does provide a seamless single point of contact with IFS. It is a conduit for into the organization for IFS product support for gold and platinum or the IFS uh, managed cloud services if you're on the IFS cloud. And it does provide for faster overall resolution for any non-product types of issues. Um, one of the uh, restrictions initially is that it is in English. Um, so if there's additional languages that would be required, that would have to be considered a, um, a custom package. Uh, there is on-site expertise that can be delivered, but normally these services are expected to be delivered remotely. Um, and 24 by 7 by 365 coverage needs, you know, if you have those requirements uh, for this managed services, you know, those would be uh, priced in as an additional add-on. If you're doing weekend on call for go-lives, cutovers, um, uh, acquisitions, things like that, those would be in there. Uh, specific packages tied to upgrades, so if you're coming from apps 9 to 10 or apps 8 to 10, uh, those can also be built in to the subscription but as an add-on. And then any customized uh, code assessments, you know, to really go in and uh, do a deep functional uh, spec for, um, you know, customization code. So just an example of, you know, kind of how it's put together. Uh, if we were to take a look at, you know, if, uh, you know, from January to June, you know, you were just going to start your app, um, uh, maybe a implementation of apps 10 or an upgrade of apps 10, you know, to start off, you're going to just have, you know, 15 of the competency center tickets and 10 of the operational services tickets. Um, and you don't really anticipate you're going to need any expert during that first six-month period. Then from July to December, well, you're going to be a little bit more in the actual workshopping and maybe some of the um, process optimization for your upgrade. So now you're going to have 20 competency center and 15 operational and five expert. Uh, then you start looking at, you know, okay, next January through June, you know, we're going to reduce that a little bit. And then from July to December, you know, we're going to already be live on the new version. We're going to be kind of optimizing, you know, after we get, you know, live. Uh, and then you'll just steady state down so, you know, that in uh, year 2022, maybe all you need is uh, 10 competency and five operational tickets through the whole year. Uh, so if you look at how those things are priced, 
Uh, the transition period, that two-month transition period, is typically a flat price. Uh, and then the tickets are what really drive how much the um, maintenance is. So, you know, this would be for that January to June six-month period, about 39000 Then for that ramped-up period where you're doing process re-engineering and optimization and rolling out the, um, you know, maybe the upgrade and some of the new features functionality, it goes up for that six-month period. Then it tails back down the first half um, after you're live. Uh, and then it starts to really stabilize. So, you know, you're looking at, you know, potential here for three years, all the services needed um, for about 290,000. Um, so the steps to get into a AMS agreement, uh, there's a confirmation of the system and modules that need to be covered. There is a level of technical and functional support required that needs to be discussed. Uh, confirmation for any of the non-standard requirements and then we'll look at all the information that's available if you have your own case management tracking of course IFS has been case tracking um, activities from you know our customer base and you know we'll look at that information and, and share it back to, to kind of decide what the level should be uh, we'll create a straw man service model and validate that with you that gives you some high level pricing um, proposal so you can start to understand exactly you know what what this uh, application management service model is for your company uh, and then of course we will go ahead and provide you know any of the pricing uh, including the list of what is in scope uh, during the um, agreement period and then we'll provide what we call the success agreement framework which includes all the terms and conditions service level agreements and you know the distribution of tickets etc so you have a uh, commercially it's a three to five year contract um, the pricing is based on a mix of the number of cases, uh, mix and quantity of cases that are needed. Uh, those cases are broken down into the four categories we talked about um, and four subcategories depending upon the complexity of the, of the cases needed. Uh, there are contractual service level agreements as to you know, committed response time and resolution time. Um, there is the ability to do um, if you don't use all of your tickets during a given month, you can, you know, uh, move them month to month. There's some rollover capabilities that are in there. Um, and then there's a quarterly opportunity to uplift and pre-order work packages at preferential rates. So as you start to get more and more into this type of a, a service model, if you see a new service demand that's coming up, you know, you can actually start to pre-plan that and you get preferential rates to add that to your subscription. So some of the commonly asked questions we've had so far, you know, is what do I need to sign for application services management? Uh, this is a single services success agreement, um, so it's, it's an order form. Uh, most of you are familiar with an order form, and that is where you actually uh, order the services and uh, the um, service descriptions and everything that you need are in that same document. If I go with AMS, will I lose access to my local resources? Um, and the answer is no, not if you don't want to. I mean, EMS is primarily staffed by offshore resources um, who can, you know, most cost effectively resolve operational requirements. However, EMS has an expert service case level where normally local experts are brought back in to supplement the um, offshore team. Uh, if onshore is a must, uh, there are options to, you know, have those same resources at, um, you know, different cost structure. Uh, why are services only available as a subscription? Um, so as we look at what's happened in the world here in the last uh, year and some of the experience IFS has now with apps 9 and apps 10, you know, with layered application architecture and updates and the direction we're moving with apps 11, which will be called IFS Cloud 2020, um, you know, we're really looking that, you know, we're, we're investing heavily in making sure that we can deliver services remotely to our customers at a financially um, competitive rate. And in order to do that, there's some upfront um, commitments that need to be done both by us and by uh, you as a customer. So that is why we came up with this particular uh, subscription um, pricing model. So with that, uh, that ends today's webcast, but we will open it up for uh, questions.